Today, we're gonna to take a look at how to set up email on your iPhone. There are a number of different ways to do this and we'll go through the setup process with a few examples shortly. You can set up any type of email account on your iPhone in the Mail app, including Microsoft Exchange, Google, Outlook, and even your own web server email address. So without any further delay, let's get started. The first thing to do is to tap on the settings icon on your iPhone, tap on apps, scroll down, and then tap on mail, then tap on mail accounts, and finally tap on add account. When you do this, you'll see a list of options. The first one is iCloud which as I mentioned earlier is Apple's email service that you get by default as an Apple customer. The next is Microsoft Exchange, which is an email service provided for businesses, Google Gmail, Yahoo, AOL, and Outlook.com. There is also an option for other, which is for those of you who have a website hosting service or perhaps a work email that you wanna set up on your iPhone and this option allows you to do that. So the first thing to do is to decide what type of email account you wanna set up and then you can start the whole setup process. In this video, I'll quickly take you through two of the most popular types of email accounts and that would be Gmail and also server-based email addresses for those of you that have a website domain, small business or personal brand with a hosting account already. Let's start with Gmail, tap on Google and now enter your Google username and password. The username is usually gonna be in the form of your Gmail email address or your phone number. The password is obviously private to you and depending on the type of security you've set up on your Google account, you may be asked for further validation where you'll need to send a pin code to your phone. So go ahead and do all that and log into your account. Then you'll receive confirmation on screen that your account has been added. So then in order to access your Gmail from within the Apple email app, tap on the mail icon and you should see a brand new Gmail inbox appear tap on that and all of your emails coming to you from Gmail will be visible to you, ready to read. Now, if you wanna go and compose an email, tap on the compose icon on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. And as you can see, it automatically fills in your Gmail address as the from address because you're doing so from within your Gmail account in the mail app. So now that we've set up Gmail, let's move on and create an email account based on a web service email provider. This is for those of you who already have your own website domain, such as yourdomain.com. In my example, it's touchtechnologyreview.com. So if I wanna set up an email for that particular webmail service, I'll be entering the details that are relevant to that email account, which are available to me in my hosting control panel. So if you don't have the username and password for your email, if you don't know the mail server settings, you need to contact your hosting company in order to access these before proceeding with the next step. So provided we do have all that information, let's tap on the settings icon again. Let's tap on mail, accounts, add account, and this time we're going to select the other option. We're going to add a mail account, which is the option at the top. In the first field, enter your name. In the second field, you can enter your actual email address. I've set one up for this tutorial called inquiries at touchtechnologyreview.com. This is not my actual email address. I've just set this one up for testing purposes. I'll now enter in my password. And in terms of the description, you can put in anything you like here that will clearly identify which account you're setting up. And you'll see this appear later on as the description for your inbox. Tap on next and you get the option between setting up an IMAP or a POP email service. The main difference here is that IMAP will keep all of your emails on the server and not download it to your local device. Whereas POP email will download all of your emails onto the actual phone itself so that if you ever lose your internet connection, you'll still have those emails available for you to access directly from the iPhone. So that's a great way to have a permanent backup of your email, independent of your server if you like, but keep in mind that you'll be using up iPhone storage space. So if you have limited storage, you may be better off using IMAP. So it really depends on the way you wanna manage email as to whether you wanna select 
IMAP or pop. For this particular example, I'll stay with the IMAP setting. The top section is already complete from the previous step, which has our name, email address, and description of the account. The next one is our host name. The host name will come from your service provider, but generally it's going to be in the form of mail.yourdomain.com. So for example, my host name will be mail.touchtechnologyreview.com. Some servers use the convention smtp.touchtechnologyreview or whatever your domain is. But generally, the mail.yourdomain is going to be the naming convention. And in some instances, you'll need to use the actual name of the server. So you really do need to check this one out with your hosting provider. The username is usually the same as your email address. So in this case, it's going to be the full email address inquiries at touchtechnologyreview.com. Sometimes it can be just the word inquiries, but I find that most often the full email address is going to be your username. Next, enter your password for your email account. And in the final step, we need to specify the details of the outgoing mail server. What we just completed was for incoming email. So that's when people send email to us via that email address. Now we need to fill in details for when we're sending email out of the email application. The host name is going to be exactly the same as the incoming mail server. So in order to make this quicker, if you tap and hold on the right hand side of the incoming mail server that we typed in earlier, you'll get the option to select all and we can now copy that and paste that into the following field. And the same applies to our username, select all, copy and paste. And we can even do that with our password. So now that we have both our incoming and outgoing mail server completed, we can tap on the next option on the top right hand corner of the screen. You'll go into the verification mode and this can take anywhere up to a few minutes depending on how long it takes the iPhone to validate those credentials with your server. So you need to be patient here. If it goes on for far too long, it may mean that you've entered in some details incorrectly. So you need to go back and check that you've used the right email address, username and password. Once verified, you'll be taken to the next screen, which gives you the option to include notes in your emails. You can leave that on or off depending on your preference there. Tap on save to save down the account and you've just set up your brand new email account to go and see that account alongside your Gmail or any other account you've set up. Tap on the mail application icon and in the first screen in mailboxes, we can see the Gmail account at the top. We can see we have an iCloud account that I'd set up previously, the Gmail account that we just set up earlier and now the brand new touch technology review account that pertains to our web server email. In order to access your emails for the new account you've set up, tap on the mailbox. You'll be taken straight to the inbox where all your emails will be placed. And if you want to go and create an email, tap on the compose new mail icon on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Enter the email address that you want to send to. And as you can see by default, the from address will already be filled in with your new email address. And you can add your title and description in the email and then press the blue arrow in the top right hand corner to send your email. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this information useful. If you have any questions whatsoever, as always, feel free to put them in the comments box below and I'll endeavor to get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed the video, hit me up with a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel so that you're notified of up and coming video releases. See you on the next one. Bye for now.